Let's talk a little bit about both the stigma of using technology in diabetes and alternate sites for your CGM. So I was reading another excellent article by Diatribe, and I really recommend getting on their newsletter because they produce some very good content. Um, and it talks about the real relationship um, between people who have diabetes and technology and then feeling, feeling discriminated against um, for using the technology, for not using the technology, whatever. Basically, it's none of anybody else's business. But this leads me to remind you of one more thing in that there are different places that you can place your continuous glucose monitor besides the back of the arm. So let me explain that just a little bit. In the United States, there is a one site that is um, approved for the use of continuous glucose monitors on your body, and that is the back of the upper arm. That is it. However, all over the world, people are using different places to put their continuous glucose monitor, and it's perfectly accurate. So, and it just has to do with the FDA approval process, but if you are using your continuous glucose monitor on some different site, your chest, abdomen, wherever, and you have a faulty sensor and you call customer service, they may not send you a free replacement, maybe not, if they find out you put it in a place where it wasn't FDA approved. So if you are a provider, it is important for you to educate your patients on their alternatives, but also inform them of the realities that they may face. So let me go over a few alternative sites and how I recommend this to my patients. First, I say exactly that. It's rec the only place it's approved is the back of the arm. However, if you have a, some reason that is personal to you that you don't, you can't use this site either because of mobility, because you can't reach there for whatever reason, or you're around grabby kids. Maybe you're a large bodied person. You're always rubbing up against door frames then maybe the back of the arm is not going to be a good site for you. So whatever your reason is, or it's summertime, you don't want people to see it because you're in sports, doesn't matter, your business. So here are some other sites. The most popular site that I find is a chest placement. And the chest placement is about four fingers down from the clavicle, the collarbone, and four or five fingers in from the armpit crease which leaves a little space right here. So for women, yes, you can use this if you're a busty gal. This is not on breast tissue. This is on the pec muscle, the pectoralis muscle. And you kind of have a range here. So you can put one time, put it here and another time, move it over. And then it put it, adjust the placement to either fit completely under your bra or swimsuit or tank top or completely away from it to suit yourself. Other places would be on the lower abdomen. Um, again, positioning it so it suits you with the waistband that you have. People use the upper thigh, the lower back, but the chest placement is the most common second choice of my patients. So again, just if you're a provider, be mindful that your patients might need this information, but let them know what the consequences could be and so that they're informed. And if you're a user of this technology, um, know what some of your options are and understand the reason for the FDA approval is just that they had to pick a site and that's the most common site used. It's not the only site that works. So I hope you found this helpful. If you find these recordings helpful, um, please hit subscribe below and leave comments in the um, comment section if you have any questions.